Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. A quick intro on myself. I'm Sarah. I share my life online with multiple food allergies, mast cell activation syndrome, and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So I know how hard it can be to live with a chronic condition. So I'm very excited to host this live tonight about chronic spontaneous urticaria, or CSU, which is a chronic condition that causes episodes of hives and or swelling. This session was developed by Vindigo Medical Education with an educational grant support from Genentech, a member of Roche Group, and Sanofi and Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. More project information can be viewed in the link in the comments. So with that, I would love to introduce Dr. Kristen Sokol, who is an allergist and immunologist physician at Schreiber Allergy in Rockville, Maryland. She specializes in the care of adult and pediatric patients with a variety of allergic and immunological disorders. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Um, thanks for the introduction. My name is Kristen Sokol. I am a private allergist in the DC area and I treat patients with chronic spontaneous urticaria all the time, almost daily. I also see a variety of other allergic conditions. Um, so I'm happy to answer your questions tonight and get right into it. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to do a short Q&A style video. So viewers, feel free to drop your questions in the comments. And the recording of this live will be placed on Vindico Medical's Education's Instagram and YouTube channel. So with that, let's go on to the first question. I would love to know, what are hives and angioedema? And what does it mean if they're spontaneous or idiopathic? Great question. So just back to the basics. So hives are these annoying little things that show up on our skin. They look like wheels or welts and they're raised. They're usually red. Um, they can be small or large and they generally last a couple minutes to a couple hours. Um, swelling is also known as angioedema. So angioedema is the medical term for swelling. And that's just like a deeper hive. So it's under the skin. The hive affects the deeper layers of the skin. So it shows up on areas of the body such as the lips, the eyelids, the tongue, sometimes the hands and feet, and even the genitalia. And usually in chronic spontaneous urticaria, a lot of patients will have both hives and swelling. Some patients do only have hives. It's very rare to have just the swelling component without the hives. And by spontaneous, that means that these hives and swelling can show up at any time of day or night, and it can be very random. And there's usually no obvious trigger to these hives or swelling. Um, so that's what that means. Great. Thank you so much for that. I love getting the basic information out there. I would also love to know just what is chronic spontaneous urticaria in case anyone listening doesn't know exactly what it is or, you know, the, the specifics of it. Yeah, so chronic basically means that these hives and swelling come on, but they're lasting for a long time. So usually it, we get hives and swelling that come and go, but for longer than six weeks. That's kind of the medical definition. So if these hives and swelling episodes are coming and going, but this is lasting longer than six weeks, we usually di can diagnose chronic urticaria. Now it becomes spontaneous when we really cannot find a trigger. So there's no underlying infection, there's no underlying autoimmune disorder, there's no allergy, right, to, that's causing these hives. So when we don't really have an answer as to the exact cause or potential triggers, then we call it chronic spontaneous urticaria. Okay, so if someone is having these symptoms and they think they might have CSU, who should they go to for more information? Great question. So if the patient has a primary care physician, obviously that's a great place to start with their questions. Um, some primary care physicians don't see a lot of chronic urticaria though. So in that case, it's, it's very prudent to to refer them to a specialist. And usually allergists will, you know, deal with this. Um, we see lots of patients with chronic urticaria. We know how to treat them, but also kind of address their quality of life issues. Having chronic urticaria um, can be very debilitating, um, both physically and mentally. So allergists really are trained to um, care for this condition in a holistic sense. That's great to know. So so oh, um, are there any over-the-counter allergy medications like Benadryl that can help with the symptoms? 
Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, Benadryl, I don't love because Benadryl only will last a few hours. So when you take Benadryl, you'll have a maximum effect fairly quickly, but then that goes away also fairly quickly. So if you're if you're having chronic urticaria and the Benadryl you know works right away, then that tends to go away and you'll just get the hives and swelling right back. Um, so often we recommend the long acting antihistamines, um, the ones that are just sold over the counter. So the brand names include things like Zyrtec or Allegra or Zizol. I rarely use Claritin in these situations. It's just not as potent as some of the other antihistamines. Um, but often for hives, and this is kind of the secret, we have to increase the dose. Um, and often on the bottle or the box of your antihistamine, it'll say this will last 24 hours. You only need to take it once a day. But for hives and swelling, a lot of patients will need more than just once a day antihistamine. Um, so that's kind of like the mainstay of treatment of chronic hives and urticaria. And in a lot of patients, if we just bump up the dose to a little bit higher than the normal dose, this can really, really help patients. Oh, that's great to know that there are some like over-the-counter medications that can help. Are there any other medications that are approved for CSU, maybe even prescription ones? Yes. So right now there are two approved biologic medications for chronic spontaneous urticaria. Their names are Zolaire and Dupixent. Those are the brand names. Um, and these are both injectable medicines that are given usually once a month for hives. Um, they work in a little bit of a different way but they reduce the amount of um, IgE in your blood. Well, at least Zolaire does. Um, Dupixin works in a little bit of a different way, binding to a certain receptor that's associated with chronic urticaria. Um, but both these medications, Zolaire has been approved for quite a while. Dupixin got approved fairly recently for this specific condition, but they both work very, very well to reduce the hives, um, but not only the physical aspects of this condition, but also the itching, the uncontrolled controllable itching that is usually associated with this condition. Oh, that's great. I'm going to jump in the comments and see if there's any questions as well. Awesome. So are you more prone to this if you have other allergies? That's a great question. Um, yes, there we do see more chronic spontaneous urticaria in patients with other comorbid allergic conditions. And that means that could be anything like just seasonal allergies, eczema, asthma, food allergies. So yes, um, but not every patient with chronic spontaneous urticaria has, you know, underlying allergic disorders. So we do see it kind of show up in patients that have never had allergies before in their life. Mm -hmm. What can make CSU flare up? Great question. So going back to kind of the beginning of our um, conversation, we there are no specific causes of chron chronic spontaneous urticaria, but we do know that there are potential triggers. And the most common trigger in many, many patients is actually stress. Um, and that can mean any sort of stress. So that can be physical stress on the body, like we have an infection, um, just like a common run-of-the-mill cold can really flare uh, hives and swelling. Um, stress like surgery, right? We're undergoing a big procedure. Stressful times in our life, we're traveling, we're moving, there's a big life event, right? So anything like this can flare hives. Um, obviously anxiety, depression, things that can come along with chronic urticaria if we're not treating the patient correctly um, or the other way around, right? You have chronic urticaria and then you go, you know, you have these other mental health disorders that can certainly flare um, chronic spontaneous urticaria. Some other common things that flare urticaria episodes, um, extremes of temperature. So really, really cold weather, really, really hot and humid weather. Um, some patients um, exercise and sweating can definitely bring out hives. Um, anything that raises the body temperature, so taking a hot shower, again, exercise, um, taking something internally that can raise the body temperature. So some patients will actually report that eating really spicy foods can make their hives worse um, or drinking alcohol can make their hives worse because that increases your core body temperature. Um, those are the main kind of flares. Uh, sometimes taking certain medica medications like um, aspirin or Aleve or Advil, ibuprofen, those types of medications can sometimes flare hives. But we have to remember, and I tell the patient, they're not allergic to those medicines, but they can cause a flare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like you said, they're not allergic to it, but those being able to like look out for those triggers and, yeah. and possible causes of the hives and swelling. 
Yeah. One thing I didn't mention also, um, hormones. So hormonal changes, right? And so chronic urticaria, we didn't mention, but is more common in women. And it's more common in women of childbearing age. So we see a lot of um, like menstrual cycle changes, cause flares of hives, pregnancy, um, menopause, these big hormonal changes in our lives as women can cause flares of hives as well. Okay, interesting. Can kids get it as well? Or is it more common, like you said, um, in older women? Great question. So yes, it is more common in um, kind of that childbearing age women, but we see it in everyone. We see it in children. We see it in men, obviously, and we see it in all ages. I've seen probably, we don't really, we don't typically see it in real, really young infants, but we do see it in children. Um, I think the youngest patient I've had with chronic hives is probably under two. So we do see it. Awesome. That's great to know. I love that we talked about what to do if you think you might have CSU and, you know, who to see. Is there anything specific that people should bring with them to appointments, maybe like pictures of the hives or certain information? I think it's always helpful to prepare for appointments. So if there's anything you think that would be helpful, I think that would be good to know. Yes, pictures are worth a thousand words because some patients might think they're having hives, um, but describing them to a healthcare provider might not always get the full picture. So definitely, we love pictures. If a patient pulls out their phone and has pictures of a rash, I love that because if they, if it's so much easier for them to show me than describe a rash. Um, so yes, definitely pictures. If you have hives or swelling, that can help. Also kind of just the history, like when the hives began, um, if there were any episodes of hives when the patient was younger, right? Because this can often recur throughout life. Um, really stressful, like I was telling you before, like really stressful big situations can kind of flare hives and that might be the only time they have hives. Um, so history is really important. So bringing that nice history, what they've tried before is really important to know too. So what kind of medications have they tried? What have they tried over the counter? What, if they, what have they been prescribed for this condition? if anything, all that information really helps us move forward. If they've had any blood drawn recently, that kind of helps um, paint the picture too, to make sure there's nothing else going on. That's great. I think it can be really stressful to try to get a diagnosis. So it's helpful to know maybe what to prepare in advance so appointments go smoothly. Um, you mentioned that someone might be experiencing hives or just a rash and then they think it's CSU. Is there any other conditions that might mimic CSU and maybe what are those distinctions? Yeah, so we're getting into like kind of more, you know, detailed rashes and things like that, but um, hives can hives can show up in other conditions. So we want to rule that out, right? And so when I talked about be, um, someone being diagnosed with chronic urticaria, right? We only call it spontaneous urticaria when, when really nothing else is going on. So there is a very small subset of patients that we need to rule out other conditions. So if patients are having other symptoms that we're concerned about them having like a chronic infection or a thyroid disorder or other autoimmune condition, um, even malignancy, right, cancers, these are very rare causes, but a very small subset of patients can show up with these other conditions that kind of the hives is either the first or one of the first symptoms of this. So we definitely want to rule that out. Um, there's some other conditions that include hives. Um, I'm not going to get into all of them now because it's very detailed, but usually an allergist um, and or a dermatologist are the ones that we, we you would meet with to kind of discuss and rule out other conditions before we land on just chronic spontaneous urticaria. That's really great to know. So that's the end of our segment here. And I appreciate so, you so much for having this conversation with me today.